You gotta kick it off with a killer to grab attention. Then you gotta take it up a notch. The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Who are you? I'm Shiva, the god of death. Cells. Cells. Interlinked. It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. Folks, welcome to Debaser, a film podcast. I'm Jared Rusk, and I'm joined by my co-host, Will. Can't jam this ram. On this show, we explore both new and familiar movies as we attempt to analyze and interpret them, all in an effort to debase the films and ourselves. Yes. William. Jared. We're finally, we're finally covering, covering, oh my god, there you go, flubheads. Covering, covering. Cov- I'd edit around it if you didn't. Keep, no, it's you it's know. funnier that way. I, I like my mistakes. <laughs> I, I I can you edit know, out. Our... Un- unlike <laughs> unlike Randy the Ram, I forgot his last name. Uh, you know where he hides his mistakes. I'm unafraid of them. I don't know what the Randy's last name is. But anyways, we're finally covering. I, I have it in front of me. Here. An Aronofsky just... film. Finally, you've danced away from it. It's... Robinson is what he goes by. Oh, Randy Robinson, because his, his first name is Robin. Right, his legal first name, well, okay, in the movie is yeah. Robin Ramzinski, but his wrestling name is Randy the Ram Robinson. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we're doing an Ar- Aronofsky film, finally. Because we, I know yeah. we, both of us. We'll get to that. <laughs> both of us do not like Darren Aronofsky. Wait, you don't like him? I like two of his movies, well, three of his movies. And he's got like eight. He's, he does have a lot. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's get into yeah, it. Yeah, let's get into it, baby. Obviously, we're doing The Wrestler, the yes. 2008 film. Uh, it's available to watch on Cinemax and available for purchase and rental everywhere else. Yep. Uh, it stars Mickey Rourke, Marissa Tomei, and Evan Rachel Wood. Oh, is that the daughter? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the official synopsis is, a faded professional wrestler must retire, but finds his quest for a new life outside the ring a dispiriting struggle. Yeah, that, yeah. that, is, that is the movie. It's, uh, yeah. It's directed by Darren Aronofsky and written by Robert Siegel. Aronofsky is known for such films as Requiem for a Dream. Great movie. The Fountain. Uh, that one was weird. Mother. Or sorry. Mother. Mother! Exclamation point. Uh, en- an enjoyable watch one time around. Super ham-fisted. Like the most ham-fisted movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, was it? <laughs> okay black swan i've also seen oh i forgot he did black swan uh-huh. that one was a that one was okay and the whale which i loved i fucking loved the whale bro so of those films that i've just named yes. the ones i've seen i hated all of them except black swan but i never want to watch black swan again again yeah black swan's a you can watch it i once feel like all then. of his films are like a one and done <laughs> No, if, I, even if you liked it, I feel like, why would you watch this again? <laughs> I have I have seen Requiem for a Dream three times now. I was repulsed when I saw that movie. That was like, well, and the person that recommended it to me, I really love and respect. And I was me? just like, why? Was no, it me? It wasn't <laughs> I know, I'm just messing. I, I don't want to out them, but I even told them like years and years later, I was like, dude, I did not like that movie. You didn't I, like and I didn't to want to ass? tell you. No! Ass to <laughs> so ass, bad. Dude. dude, ass to ass was the I was also best. way too young when they recommended it to me. <laughs> I, watched it, I watched it with Haley. It's like very awkward to be like, yikes. <laughs> yikes. Yeah. So hold on. Um, oh, no, I'll ask you if you like this movie at the end. <laughs> okay. Uh, writer Robert Siegel is known for his work on Big Fan. Uh, that's the Patton Oswald movie. If I've seen oh, okay. It's like, like a. Uh, I've never seen it. Yeah. Uh, a very aggressive like football fan it it's it, it was a pretty fun indie movie okay uh he also wrote turb oh turbo <laughs> that's, a, that's a typo on my part turb <laughs> it's turbo that like snail disney uh, movie he did the Turbo. yeah movie? he wrote turbo <laughs> that movie's actually not that bad uh the founder which is the michael keaton uh mcdonald's movie oh that movie's so good Dude, that I've never, is it i oh. never saw it Bro, that movie's good. It, wow. It makes you fucking hate Michael Keaton. Oh. It's a good movie. I thought you were going to be like, yeah, it makes you like think McDonald's is the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. I, I just assumed it was like a puff piece for McDonald's. Oh, no. Michael Keaton, fuck. It, it's the opposite. So he's playing like a bad guy? He's yeah? evil he's as so fuck. so good when he does that. Dude, he is straight up the most evil motherfucker on planet oh, Earth. Now you got me jazzed Bro, for that this. Was- Put it on the fucking list. That movie is good. <laughs> I, I, I'm excited to watch I, that. I remember walking in. Hold, hold on yeah. real quick. That that movie came out uh, during my like Warhammer Trap House uh, days when, <laughs> uh, no shit, Friday night, me and like six other dudes would go to our friend's place in Lake Alfred. 
eat like fucking three things of Hunger Howie's pizza and play Warhammer till like two in the morning. And one so time, heaven, you're describing heaven. Yeah, it was fucking heaven for me. <laughs> um, one night I walked in and I remember like looking over and be like, oh, is this the fucking founder? And my buddy Cass was like, yeah, yeah, have you seen this? I was like, dude, this movie is fucking wild. I didn't play Warhammer that night. I watched that movie <laughs> instead. It was so good. <laughs> Uh, he also wrote the Pam and Tommy miniseries that aired on FX a few years ago about uh, Pamela Anderson and Tommy, oh, the guitarist. Yeah. Uh, I forget what band he played for. The film had a budget of $6 million. Very, very tiny. Wow. And it grossed $44.7 million. Not shock office. It was a good movie. Uh, yeah, it had a lot of press, too. It, yeah. was, uh, it was a big deal. Mickey Work was famously nominated for an Oscar for his role in the film, although he lost to Sean Penn for his portrayal of politician Harvey Milk in the <gasps> film Milk. Oh, that was the same year same Milk came out? Year Dude, milk. milk was so good. I think he would have had it if it wasn't for Milk. Yeah, he right. would have had it in the bag if it weren't for Milk. In a bag. <laughs> okay, I need you to put the womp, womp, you know, fucking yeah, sound. That was, no, that was good, though. Uh, Mickey Work did win a BAFTA, a Golden Globe, and many other awards for his performance as Randy the Ram Robinson. The film received nearly universal acclaim and holds a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. I was going to point that out because when I went to go watch it, it showed the tomato meter mm -hmm. on the thing and I saw 98% in the back. It's like, yep. that is ac uh, accurate. I fucking agree with that one. Uh, reviewing the film for The Guardian, film critic Peter Bradshaw wrote, the wrestler runs on what are admittedly pretty traditional lines for a sports film, yet runs on them with exhilarating speed and attack. I was waiting for a cop-out ending, but it never arrived. In her review of The Wrestler for The Spectator, critic Deborah Ross wrote, A story of personal ruin, and while it certainly does echo Mickey's own life, it wouldn't be fair to say he is playing himself. Sure, Rourke's performance must have been informed by his own past, but that is different, as well as peculiarly powerful. I 100% disagree with that that's this movie is definitely about fucking mickey Rourke. <laughs> but with with a wrestler like veneer right right prominent figures in the wrestling community also gave approving comments for the film including vince mcmahon brett the hitman hart mick foley and roddy piper i hesitated to give his full wrestling name rowdy roddy piper but yeah i <laughs> i get tripped up all saying his name all oh, the do time you? I'm so glad I got it out in one take there. You know what's crazy? Uh, I didn't realize Mike Foley uh, had praise for it. because Mick. Mick, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mick Foley had praise for it because he's in the movie. Like, not him, but there's a character in there that is 100% him playing Mankind. Are you talking about, like, the hillbilly guy that gets, uh... Yeah. It's like something the butcher? Yeah. That's a real wrestler. Is that a real... What? Like, almost every guy in this movie is a real wrestler. Yeah. I could have sworn it was a, an homage to uh, to McFoley. You know, he's a real like underground like no fucking weirdo way. like gets glass and barbed wire. It just wire. reminded me so much of like uh, the the one I can't remember. I mean, who. his his wrestling character may be inspired by mankind in real life too. Oh, okay, that may be what that is. Right on. That's yeah. what I assume because like the when they're doing you know with all the attacks and the and the the staples and shit it, and and climbing up on the the the, the ladder and, and and doing right. the it just reminded me so much of the the one match between uh, mankind and I can't remember who was who was wrestling against but uh it was a steel cage match and they had like all the barbed wire you know they had a fucking uh, they had a ladder they had tacks they had all the shit and they were just like beating the fucking dog shit out of each other well are you talking about in 1988 when the undertaker threw mankind off hell in a cell and plummeted 16 feet through an announcer's table yes actually i am <laughs> it, 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 that was 88 yeah my wife just texted me undertaker yes he is <laughs> she heard oh dude <laughs> oh shit are you fucking serious yeah sorry that's a copy pasta from uh 4chan about that oh incident. i didn't realize yeah, that yeah that was uh, yeah it was a famous i'm incident. so sorry uh i do think they're maybe mimicking that a little bit in that scene but mm -hmm. not with the same production value it was six million dollars uh so like well, exactly, yeah yeah they were um, keeping that shit string, uh, shoestring. Have low. you seen that actual match? Yeah, I have. That's why I was oh, uh, shocked okay. it was in 88, because I've seen it. I've seen the whole thing. It is. Fucking brutal. Insane. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. I know. Was it 88 I've or seen was it? it? I actually think it was 98. It had though. to be 98, because like I got out of wrestling shortly after. It was 98. I'm okay. Just, <laughs> but yeah, that's... Okay. That, that, I'll I, cut that back. I remember Damn that. <laughs> I remember that shit was fucking crazy. It is. I saw it recently and was like, oh, this is why everybody talks about that. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, it's nuts. Because I saw that uh, Mick Foley is like recounting it and he's like, I looked down at The Undertaker and I was like, 
please wake up. Please wake up. Please wake up. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Okay. So, well, I've got some trivia. Here. Yes. Thank you. Uh, you know. I, I love I love your trivia so much, I'm Jared. I'm so glad. It's my fucking, like, one of my favorite things. I was just talking saying about that as, like, a segue, but, like, I appreciate that. Because I try to put some effort into this show. No, <laughs> I, I appreciate your effort because I don't fucking put any. Sure. I, you, I no, show up don't and I, sell yourself <laughs> short. Come on now. Uh, so, I had a lot to, like, I knew there was going to be so much juice to yeah. get into about this film. Because oh, yeah, Because famously, like, this film is reminiscent of like mickey works actual life and hardships mm -hmm. and there was a lot of like behind the scenes drama in the production of the film and in the like during the press tour of the film and uh so i'm gonna dig into that a little Let's bit hear here. It. so uh the first scene of randy working the deli counter was mostly improvised i figured uh real customers kept walking up to the counter during filming they did not shut down the grocery store uh darren aronofsky told mickey work to take their orders while the camera would continue rolling also improvised were all of the backstage locker room scenes. Oh, no shit. Even, wait, hold on. Even when he was um, buying drugs and steroids off of that one guy? Uh, that probably wasn't. Okay. Um, I was like, there's no fucking way. But like that guy was like, he was running through it, dude. Yeah. Did you think he was a little too slick about that? Yeah, just maybe a little bit. <laughs> like he hasn't, you know, had some practice. So funny you should say that. Uh, that. My exact next line here is Scott Siegel, the actor who portrayed a steroids dealer in the film, the guy we were just talking about, yeah. was arrested a few months later oh after the film's release for steroids possession God. and assaulting federal officers. Are you fucking kidding? I'm dead <laughs> serious, dude. I love it when uh, life imitates art. <laughs> It's so good. Dude. Which I think this film is all about, baby. Uh, it sure is, <laughs> In man. more ways than one. Um, damn. So all that was, uh, most of that was, because like the the part where he's talking with his first opponent, the guy with the mohawk. Yes. Like uh, going over like what they're going to do yeah, and yeah. whatnot. And once again, they, they, they to make it sound authentic, they slide in, you know, a couple of wrestling terms such as cheap heat. Yeah. You know, uh, so that was improvised as well. I mean, according okay? to this factoid that I read, yeah, <laughs> yes, okay. Well, hey, you know that means that Mickey but was doing his it, homework, which is great. It's not impossible that they had a loose script to right, work yeah, off yeah, of, yeah, or yeah. they were like, "Hey, just pretend like you're throwing together, you know, some, some wrestling shit. moves." Yeah, yeah. It it may be telling too. In a lot of those scenes, uh, Mickey work isn't leading the discussion. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, that's true. Because they'll yeah. walk up to Mickey and be like, "Hey, what do you want to do? I figure we'll do this, this, and this." And Mickey just goes, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> well, I remember he rolled up to. In, at the last last scene or like the last match he rolls up to the ayatollah and, and goes like right he's like hey, what man, do you want to do? Do, do and the ayatollah goes like uh the same thing we always do baby you be the face i'll be the heel you know and that feels like, improvised because he's like i'm not sitting here fucking coming up with the whole thing i'm just gonna say something funny you know oh, that's good <laughs> yeah now, now hold on that was the iron sheik correct yeah that is the fucking crazy thing him. yeah that's crazy dude and he's basically playing the iron sheik yeah. in that scene too yeah, yeah. it's great oh, that's good <laughs> I did like how this film was shot like a documentary. Oh, 100%. Like, just the way the camera acted anyway, I mm -hmm. should say. Now, the camera isn't ever treated. Like, no one talks to camera. Yeah, It's no. not addressed. Correct. But the way it follows, like, handy cam style, like, mm -hmm. and just over the shoulder. There's too. a part, I think, where the cameraman uh, trips a little bit uh, following uh, Mickey Rourke out of his uh, car. Uh, he's like, he gets oh. out of his fucking ram yeah. he drives a ram he dodge ram yes. yes and he hops out and he goes out around the front and the cameraman is following him and i think he fucking kicked the curb on accident because you can kind of see the the oh, camera yeah. jostle a little bit it's like uh that's funny well, but if, it adds authenticity to it if we see the second version of the wrestler where it's the camera crew that's filming the camera crew we'll see that's actually oh. where they traded off cameramen because that guy fell and broke his ankle that would be good <laughs> i'm referencing oh, the I know. one cut of the dead yes episode. i'm very aware but that was <laughs> I, uh, sorry actually, i wanted the listener to know <laughs> no that's actually a good fucking like oh, dude, what if they did do that that'd be fucking tight and then there's I a love third movies person. about movies so yeah. like I, i'm up for it <laughs> you know what you also like movies about guys doing a job and doing that job well and that is what this movie is he does the wrestling part well it's everything else does is he? a fucking mess yeah he? yeah <laughs> duty ram jams you can't i don't know if you can hear that but okay. i'm fucking slapping my elbows <laughs> as someone who actually watches wrestling now i, oh, I could actually, not say that a year ago. he actually sucks um yeah w there's a thing when like um i i will concede one thing uh, about the wrestling part at the end of the film i don't think he is a great wrestler because he is in pain and so you can actually see parts okay. where he's like saying hey lift me up yeah as someone who watches wrestling now and i couldn't say that a year ago yeah um, it's a little bit of a struggle when let's say a, a legacy 
wrestler shows up or a veteran, you know, someone who's been doing it for, you know, almost as long as I've been alive, if not longer. Right. And uh, they come on and they do like a little match and you're just like, oh, buddy, this is not exciting. I'm scared for you. Right. You know, like you're going to get hurt. Uh, Sting. I God, know. God bless yeah. him. He, he's a great wrestler, but, uh, you know, he's older than my parents. And uh, he's got he's got no right being up there, man. Uh, he is supposed to retire this year, and I'm glad for him because there was a match last year where I was really concerned. Yeah, th- I know? remember actually. I I do actually remember this because yeah. I, 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 I want to say that I brought it up. I was like, "Yo, Sting's fucking wrestling again." He was like, "Yeah, actually." And yeah, yeah. it's rough. It's rough, and uh, you know, wrestling is hard on anybody, but yeah. uh, people in their mid sixties should. Should not maybe be doing definitely it. not be yeah. wrestling. <laughs> it's rough. You're you probably know? right. Uh, that's that's just how I feel about it. But no, I got you. I, I was getting that impression from Mickey Works matches too, where it's like, oh, people are only showing up because he was a big deal, you know, forty years ago. Yeah, thirty years ago. This movie's uh already kind of old. Um, it's weird to think of because I remember when this movie came out though. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, where he's a little slow, he's a little sluggish. It's it's difficult for him to perform some moves. You know, it's it's rough. He yeah, can still jump from the yeah. the top rope, baby. Yeah, yeah. Um. So during the director's uh, ask me anything on Reddit, Darren Aronofsky revealed the fate of the Ram. So the ending is a little oh, ambiguous. I don't know if I want you to tell me. Oh, I'll I'll skip it. I I hope he died. I mean, yeah, that's 1,000% what happened. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, in fact, he does die at the end of the film. Aronofsky explained that he always intends for his protagonist to die at the end of the film, even if not explicitly so- shown. Uh, the one exception is 2014's Noah, because it was an adaptation of the Bible. <laughs> Aronofsky did Noah. That's yeah. fucking right. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's such a fucking hack. <laughs> um, yeah, I, w- I was hoping that um, that he, he he did die at the yeah. end. Yeah. Um, Aronofsky's a fucking hack. <laughs> I can't handle it, dude. But you like his movies. I like some of his movies. Once he, again, he didn't even write this. It's one. A sum. Hey, maybe maybe I like him as a director. This but not was a at the time the first film he did not write that he made too, and it's his best one, hands down. <laughs> I I really enjoyed the whale. Well, I also agree, the whale I, is I, based I on a book of the ones I've seen. Yeah, this is my favorite one. The whale is based on a book. So once again, he didn't write the entire. It's not thing based on a. Critical essay of Moby Dick. Uh, well, I mean, it kind of is too. This is true, <laughs> um, but no, it's it's it was a, a book written by a man who, you know, was a uh, closeted and also like depressed and gained a lot of weight, jerked off while eating subs. And, I'm, I'm sure that happened, yeah. and then he lost a lot of that 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 weight uh, as of recently from jerking off. Probably, <laughs> uh, you should see his bait and arm dude is fucking huge but anyways um, he does the jared from subway thing where he holds up his pants and they're just like three times his size it's a good thing that you said like holding up the pants and not something else oh, god um <laughs> well you you stepped into that one so that's i, know. That's I hate you. to invoke the guy he's a fucking oh, you shouldn't have done that god um but rotten, anyways rotten so hell. like the whale is probably his best film but the wrestler is my favorite of his films uh, that is my favorite one hands down i fucking love the wrestler Would this you, is like the fifth time i've seen this movie if if this film ended with Mickey work jerking off and then ascending to heaven, would you have liked it more than yes. the whale? <laughs> I actually, actually, hold on. If he, uh, no, hold on, hold on, Jared. If he had gotten on the top rope and did the fucking slapping is, you know, to do a signature move and then actually and then his- leaps and then just actually goes to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude, that would have been so fucking good. Oh Cause there God. is a moment Right, right. When the movie cut the credits, where my wife was like, "Wait, rewind it." Did he actually die in the ring? And then the rest was a fantasy. And I was like, "No." <laughs> so good, dude. She pulled on me. Yeah, that's absolutely something you would have said. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, I, you know, it's really great, uh, Jared. Nineteen-year-old uh, me got the ending pretty like succinctly. Yeah. Did I ever tell you the story of like how I got into this movie? Uh, no, no. Okay, so um, I was on a plane to Ireland. My aunt wow. was taking me to Ireland. This was a, a, a graduation gift that my grandmother was going to give. Oh, no shit. To give me uh, before she passed away. Right. Uh, so oh, it got postponed a, a year later. Right. And I didn't realize, I was terrified 
because I don't fly. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize that they gave you movies uh, for free, you know? And I remember sitting uh, back and I saw uh, one of the strip club scenes uh, with Marissa Tomei and thinking like, what the fuck was that? But then, you know, whatchamacallit, uh, I also saw Mickey Rourke. I was like, oh, this has got to be like, this is a wrestling thing. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure I can find this. On the way back from Ireland, I found it and I put it on. And, you know, I was, I was. Were you alone in your row? No, my aunt was sitting right next to me. <laughs> okay. Ballsy. I didn't know what, it was called the wrestler. I was like, oh, th- maybe. Yeah, but you were seeking it out because you saw the strip club scene, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, of course. You were willing to watch that in front of your own Well, I didn't family. know how, I didn't know how explicit what it was because I didn't, I couldn't see anything. Like I was okay. like, oh, you know, this is like any other movie where they, they cover everything up. Right. So I put it on. I'm like, oh man, wow. This is, this is not what I expected, but this is really good. You know, I, I came for the Marissa Tubies and I stayed for the excellent, uh, you know, uh, writing and directing and acting because uh, this movie's got it all, baby. Okay. Yeah, I saw it on my way back from fucking Ireland. And like, I've I've loved this movie ever since. It's such a good movie. I flew uh, to Alaska for my high school graduation mm-hmm. and do not recall watching movies. I don't think we had that option on Alaska Airlines. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it was a very long flight. I remember reading uh, Kevin Smith's collection of essays uh, fat man no silent bob speaks yeah cool uh i read a i did read a book actually on the way over there yeah i read um fire warrior it's a warhammer 40k book of course it's not a good one yeah neither was the kevin smith book I <laughs> <laughs> do not endorse it it nice. was uh yeah it was mostly him talking shit about celebrities and uh, oh, okay and Nick talking about his experiences with weight loss pills it's so weird that i remember reading that book that was so long ago yeah anyway anyways uh <laughs> Back to the trivia. Mickey Rourke uh, has had an interesting and hard life. He has. Uh, He initially rocketed to fame in the early 80s as a handsome movie star. I want to stress the word handsome in that uh, sentence. I've seen him, his picture, uh, a young Mickey Rourke. I don't see it. I don't see it. Fine, but yeah, listener. I know. He was was apparently. Google young Mickey Rourke. He looks very good. He's a good looking guy. You will see what I mean. Before all of the fuckery. Well, so in 1991, after a series of failed films, Mickey retired from acting and became a professional boxer. Oh, is that what happened? Among other things. Hang on. Okay. So after retiring from boxing in 1994, he obtained reconstructive surgery on his face to mend his many boxing injuries Mm -hmm. and returned to Hollywood as a supporting actor, typically in action films. So it was a mix of the boxing and plastic surgery. Yes. Uh, I knew that he had gotten plastic surgery. Uh, I did not know that he had been boxing. I thought his plastic surgery... uh, surgeries were like botched just wait oh fuck okay (laughs) his first big comeback uh was the lead role in the film sin city who was he in sin city he's marv he's marv yeah he okay so the 2005 film sin city robert uh, director robert rodriguez handpicked him to play uh the hero marv i mean the guy is like brutish and disfigured. He, yeah. he was kind of perfect for it. Yeah. He did wear a lot of prosthetics that, on his face. That's though. why I didn't catch it. I didn't realize. Holy shit. Oh, I never looked at the cast list for that either. He I I don't know how you missed it. That was how I learned who Mickey Rourke was. That movie. Because like I was obsessed with it. Oh, that I movie. know, I know. Since it, you, you I watched you the movie in 10th grade and I was never the same. So you saw it once and that became your personality, it's, just like Donnie Darko. Yep. I'm very <laughs> I'm very aware. Yeah. That was in the uh like I'm not super proud of it. Like I still cringe to this day because uh Dude, it's okay. Uh, I know, but when I was like uh, eighteen or nineteen, I took a film course in uh at college mm-hmm. and we were all like going around the room saying what our favorite movie was, and I said Sin City and uh kind of got some jeers about it yeah because everyone else was saying shit like 2001 a space odyssey and and all you know your typical like kubricks and shit and you know what i would have said what's that the saw movies (laughs) (laughs) i mean at that time there was what one it was one and it was no there was probably two or three two was out two was out yeah yeah, because i watched those three might have actually been out too i don't know but anyway yeah i i I, like i had seen a lot of the movies everyone else was naming but i was like I thought 2001 was bullshit. I still kind of think 2001. Like, I get that it's important as a film, but like, right. I don't think it's You're saying it film. because you're pretentious. Exactly. Yeah, like, everyone in here is like being a pretentious college student. Like, come on. I'm like, tell me I, how you really feel, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Do I defend Sin City to this day? No, but it's like a guilty pleasure, you know? <laughs> What's wrong with that? It has a horrible sequel. 
Um, anyway, uh, Sin City began his first initial comeback to Hollywood and led to Aronofsky courting him for the lead role in today's film. Gotcha. After The Wrestler, Mickey had several supporting roles in major films like Iron Man 2. Yep. Where he is Whiplash? Is he's, that the guy's name? He's actually a mixture between Whiplash and the Crimson Dynamo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Where did they do that? I don't know why the fuck they did that. It was really fucking stupid. And then they kill him off. It was, it's the worst Iron Man. Uh, I, I, and I agree. The Expendables. Which was so weird because in the first one, he's just like, uh, like a taskmaster. He like gives, gives, uh, Stallone's people like a thing to do. Yeah. And I think in the second one is the one where he actually like shows up and does something. Yeah. But more or less, he just like is there to hey guys i need you to go do a fucking mission and then like they go and they do it and then yeah. they come back and they're like hey you know we're you know we're a family and then we're all gonna ride hogs together and then they ride the hogs maybe he isn't in the sequels because he couldn't be bothered i don't know he's in the second one yeah well for the last decade mickey mainly works on direct-to-video action films just and, like bruce willis and well you know about bruce willis. well i know yeah i know yeah, about bruce willis and, yeah. but mickey's not far behind him I think Bruce was just trying to make as much money as he could before he had to retire, though. And you know what? Good for him. Yeah. I uh, I respect him. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of media coverage of Mickey Rourke and Darren. Oh, I sorry. Let me backtrack a little bit. Yeah. Mickey's had a lot more plastic surgery. Yes. In the in the ensuing years. And uh, it's pretty obvious mm -hmm. when you look at him now. Um, he's had a lot of work done. Some good and some not so good. It's, uh, you know, he's not aging gracefully, let's say. Nope. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Uh, there was a lot of media coverage of Mickey Work and Darren Aronofsky during the wrestler's press tour, with both men being very candid with reporters. Uh, Work referred to Aronofsky as a taskmaster. Uh, funny that I invoke that again. Yeah, that's really weird. It, and claimed he was very demanding of him and the crew. Uh, the following is an excerpt from a Los Angeles Times article written by Mark Olson. Aronofsky has had to accept that Work may exaggerate aspects of their working relationship. To quote, Mickey's a storyteller, if you haven't figured that out, he said, but the director also believes that the ends justify the means for all it took to get the performance from Rourke. I think the reality about Mickey is he's so talented. He can coast through a film and actually be pretty good, and he's done that way too much, said Aronofsky. I just had to push him, every day. I had to, honestly, get him out of bed and fight to keep him on set to do the work. But there was no one more natural and more giving. Just getting him to the starting line was probably the most difficult thing I've ever done in my career. Jared, how is this movie not about him? How is this movie not about <laughs> him, bro? It's the same fucking thing. I'm not saying it's not. <laughs> oh, I know. I know you're not. But like the, 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 the first reviewer, the, the I, think, I feel like you fucking picked that because yeah. you know she's wrong. Well, there's parallels. <laughs> yeah. Keep going. I, there's more here. Uh, <laughs> Great. Aronofsky refers to the process of working with work as both a battle and a collaboration. <laughs> He explained how, despite initial hesitation, he allowed Work to have his character wear hearing aids, but noted with pride how he thwarted Work from indulging in perhaps his most notorious on-screen trademark. If there's any accomplishment that's my greatest accomplishment in this movie, he said, it's that he never wears sunglasses in this film. I fought him every day about sunglasses because he wants to hide. I guarantee you there aren't many movies where he doesn't wear sunglasses. One thing Mickey does, he tries to protect himself from people looking to his eyes. You look into his eyes and he's an open wound. There's so much pain. There's so much struggle, so much wisdom, love, and soul. Holy but shit. But he hides it. Holy shit. Yeah. Maybe Aronofsky is not a hack. Now, I could not collaborate this rumor during my research, and I did try. Reader, I tried. Uh, but I have heard that Mickey Work and Marissa Tomei did not get along on set. There are rumors that the kiss scene in the bar was filmed with stand-ins for each actor as Tomei refused to shoot the scene with Mickey. And watching the scene, it's not difficult to imagine uh, because nearly every shot is a close-up without the other actor in frame. I, I had a brief moment where I was like, is she, does she have a green screen behind her? You know, that may be true, too, because they maybe they didn't shoot on the same day. They weren't on set together. I was like, dude, go watch. Go watch it again. Yeah. Uh, it's he, very weird. She's the way it's, it's kind staged. of blurry. Yeah. So I couldn't find any real evidence. Like I kept plugging in different terms. Like my, I'm sure my Google search history from that day looks 
insane i'm sure but i could not find like an actual like testimony from anybody about it yeah it's just rumors well you don't want to like fuck yourself right but that's having said like but aronofsky and mickey were like pretty candid about what it was like working together but mickey only had nice things to say about tomei so i i'm i'm certain it was tomei who had issues with rourke and she would not be the first actress to to do so i'm sure um you said there's like another yeah years and years later mickey was talking to a reporter and either said or implied that he was in a like dating or in a relationship with evan rachel wood who plays his daughter in this film yeah and when she when she was reached her comment about it she said that's fucking disgusting and that's insulting that he would say that about me yeah it's wild <laughs> yep that's the end of my trivia dude <sighs> That's fucking crazy. Uh, you know what's uh, wild is I don't think that uh, Mickey Rourke wears a lot of sunglasses in Iron Man. Actually, I think he does. Not nah, he really? doesn't in Sin City, but he also is wearing a ton of prosthetics. This is true. This is true. But I yeah, think he does. That's that's wild that Aronofsky kind of like pinned him on that one because I, I can kind of like I can understand that for sure. If he's like he's using stuff to hide him, himself away from people, like I, I can get that. Um. So Jared, like, what do you, what do you, what do you want to talk about uh, in this film? Like, like, did you, did, do you want to talk about anything? Do you, did I you have like a plot it? Summary. But do, uh, do you want to hit Should that, or do you want to, do we want to just talk about Aronofsky? Because there's so much there. You know, like, I okay. What did you like about this film? Oh, r- real fast. I yeah. didn't. I didn't write this down, but mm-hmm. that first wrestling match that we see in the film, yes, where he uh, hides the razor blade in yes. his uh, wrist. Yes, Hulk Hogan did that, didn't he? Oh, like. All of them, all of that's a very common tactic yeah it was a real razor blade he really cuts his forehead <gasps> holy fucking shit that's wild yeah, but like wrestlers do it all the time i know but mickey Rourke is not a wrestler he's a bitch uh, he was a boxer which <laughs> he is, was a boxer you're, yeah you're right you're you're, you're, you're right about that it, it those are two different worlds to yes. be fair but yeah. uh th- but they do cut your head all the time in boxing for different reasons <laughs> that's true that's fucking true um but yeah that's a very common tactic it's called blading yeah and uh when you see like an older wrestler uh who does a lot of blading or did a lot of blading um they got scars oh like, yeah uh, duel of the butcher is a perfect example and uh and before he passed rest in peace uh bruiser brody who we mentioned on our uh, iron claw episode that's right yeah his, also had a lot of scars forehead was fucked, fucked up uh yeah that's unfortunate but uh yeah it's it's rough stuff man yeah um, but yeah he actually cuts himself that razor blade yeah and because good for him superficial cuts on your face are very easy to bleed from so yeah. it's very showy yeah um is why they do it right but, uh i mean it's it's rough it's brutal you it's know? crazy dude. uh every time i see a lot of blood in an AEW show i'm like god i hope that's a blister pack you know and not not yeah, yeah. what i think it is exactly uh, yeah 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 but uh, i do know wrestlers that like blade and uh and even use forks and stuff and it's I don't love it. Uh, there was a particularly brutal match uh, maybe a month ago between mm-hmm. um, Hangman Adam Page and Swerve Strickland. Uh, it was a great match, but it was very gory. Like, my wife and I were getting pretty See, squeamish about it. You it know, was rough. Jared, I think that you'd love the Duffy League wrestling, Duffy Wrestling League and not the uh, the extreme uh league of ECW? florida no oh. it's it's a uh, it's i'm i'm referencing heels which oh, of you, course, you still of need course. to watch yeah. fucker <laughs> <laughs> i will say i have not finished all of dark side of the ring but yeah. the episode that i uh found the hardest to watch was an episode about a guy named new jack who wrestled for ecw which was like the yeah super the... hardcore wrestling league mm-hmm. where there was like you know yeah you could get away with anything almost right and uh this new jack guy man holy shit yeah every every incident that they would talk about i was just like what there's another one this he was still wrestling he did what <laughs> it just kept escalating and escalating it was brutal man. i gotta watch the, the stuff this, that this guy show. did it's rough that's nuts and that's that's after like multiple uh, episodes about people that died or right, killed people right. yeah and then you get to new jack and he just like he didn't kill anybody but he got a lot of people really hurt. Yeah, I gotcha. And and like to the point where he had been arrested multiple times for assault in the Whoa. in the ring. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> it's bad. It was rough. <laughs> right on. Um anyway, back to the wrestler. Yes. <laughs> so Aronofsky. Uh yeah, I mean like man, where to begin? Or, or here, here, let's do this. What did you like the film? 
Point blank. Yes. Okay. Yes. I like this film. Fantastic. And then uh, what did you like about it? Because I wanted to like d- discuss things that I really enjoyed about this film before we just start tearing Ar- Aronofsky yeah. apart because he he deserves criticism. I love the performances, obviously. Um, yeah, they were going I like Mickey Rourke. Um, yeah. The few times he doesn't phone it in, um, which you could probably count on one hand. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say like Aronofsky said he phones it in. I don't I don't know outside of out of uh fucking expendables if you open his imdb page you know it's it's probably pushing triple digits now oh, okay he makes trash i got you. especially in the last decade and yeah and change yeah um yeah he makes a lot of bad movies um and that's why he had like his two comebacks you know sin city and this mm-hmm. and uh man it's it's a lot you know yeah um He's a tricky guy, and that's why this movie is so interesting because of the parallels to his real life. And mm-hmm. you can, even if you don't know it, you can kind of see in his eyes. You know, yeah. Like if you come into this movie knowing nothing about Mickey Rourke, just the way he looks, both in his his body and in his, you know, in his eyes, yeah, you, you can see you can see this guy. Like it's so believable. Yeah, it's not it is. a push. You know, and even like the the famous uh, scene where he's working the table uh, at the deli he's incredible like yeah you really get that this guy is like getting juice out of just a blue collar job where he's feeling important and loved Mm -hmm. you know and he's performing for these people he's like he's really like when he starts feeling himself yeah you know actually that let's let's just talk about that whole scene real quick yeah yeah um where it's shot just like if he was about to go do a wrestling show you know right he's He's, sitting there walking backstage and he's getting prepped and uh you you they actually play uh like an audience, an audience yeah. like chanting and, and getting excited mm-hmm. and it's getting louder as he's getting closer and closer to the deli. And then when he stands at the, the little like plastic, you know, paneled off uh, entrance to the deli, he kind of sits there and kind of, you know, gets himself ready. And then it, the audience sound cuts out when he walks, walks through, through the thing. <laughs> yeah. And like, you can see he's like kind of nervous, but then he really starts like, okay, I can do this. I'm providing a service for these people. Mm-hmm. And you know, he's really feeling it. And yep. Like, that's great. That's like, it's one of the best scenes in the yeah. movie, man. And it's it's very relatable for anyone who's ever worked in a service industry job or yeah. retail or anything like that. And especially the later scene where he has a particularly rough time of it. And uh, well, yeah, like, I explodes. mean, that's, that's like, the, yeah. the, the fucking just all of the bad stuff happening to him, like one after another, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and uh, I think part of part of the reason why he does what he does in that that second issue where like he throws his fucking thumb into the into the the slicer. grinder or slicer yeah. or whatever yeah is because I, I think it's a uh, self-preservation like the guy notices him as a as a washed up wrestler and i think he's he's trying to deflect because he doesn't want to bring undue attention to himself because his boss is a dickhead you know like his boss already doesn't respect what he does mm-hmm. uh, on the weekends and you know he he walked by and was like, why is the line so fucking long? And it's just because he had a, you know, a difficult uh, client and it's just like all piling up and he doesn't deal well with yeah. stress. But what he can do is he can't fucking hurt himself. And he can blow up and make a scene yep. too, you know, it's, and that's what he's used to doing. Yep. Yeah. By, by hurting himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Between that and then the whole, the parallel between uh mickey rourke's character and marissa tomei's character i know right they're both aging out of whatever profession that they're in exactly yeah Yeah. and they're both feeling you know unwanted they're being abused uh you know it's it's rough uh but it is a beautiful film it's a little surface level i guess like what's nice is like the unspoken uh parts of the film like especially oh god when he goes to the vfw hall for like the meet and greets yeah and he's just looking around that like how beaten down and broken everyone guys else are missing their fucking legs you know one guy's got a, a colostomy or a uh, catheter uh, yeah you know there's a guy passed out i, I don't know if he act, i don't know if he was sobbing or just napping i, if, I think he was napping yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was worried he was like really sad because no one was was there to see him yeah uh but yeah it's it's brutal brutal scene and it's it's shown not told which you love i do I think love that's it. a big reason why you love this movie <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> yes um uh, yeah and there's just clearly he has a fraught relationship with his daughter and he fucks it all up by missing uh, it's, a dinner date that dude you you want to fucking root for a man yeah you you want to to see him prevail 
and he just he can't fucking do it dude yeah, he, and like he fucks it up of course that's yeah. that's that's why i love the the ending of this movie man when he has that that conversation with uh you know pam marissa to character you know she's like don't don't go out there your heart can't handle it and he, and he like turns to him, he's like do you hear them you know like this is what i know out there it, it's so hard to me mm-hmm. you know i can't survive out there because all all i receive is pain you know a lot of it's because of who he is right. but mistakes he's made and exactly yeah. but he can't he can no longer deal with the real world here he's a fucking superstar everybody knows him everybody loves him you know and i think he he's aware that if he pushes himself too hard he's gonna fucking die yeah. uh but that's what he wants this is this is what he wants and he goes out there and he gives this you know this heartfelt speech to everybody there you know he's gonna wrestle his ass off and I remember at a certain point when, when like T- Marissa Tomei is watching him like getting his ass beat and shit and she can't fucking handle it. She can't watch this man die because she, even if she doesn't want to, you know, express it, she cares about him, mm-hmm. you know? And, uh, he looks up to where she was and she's gone, yep. you know? And he's just like another confirmation that the outside world's just not for me. And he fucking jumps from the top ropes and you can hear the cheer of the crowd and shit. And then fucking nothing. Cause his ass dies <laughs> as he should have. <laughs> Doing what he loves and uh, doing the Ram Jam. To quote Kurt Cobain, who was quoting uh, Neil Young, it's better to burn out than to fade away. You know, it's funny that you bring up Kurt Cobain because uh, 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 Randy, the Ram Robinson, uh, Kurt Cobain slander does not like Kurt Cobain. (laughs) It's so funny. He's so obsessed with hair metal. Yeah. And uh, from the 80s and everything. And then he just he gets into a rant in the bar with Mr. Tomei's character about how much he hates Kurt Cobain and presumably grunge, like grunge yeah. I guess, but like, it's just so funny hearing someone bitch about Kurt Cobain. It's great, dude. I fucking love that. That was awesome. You know? Cause like he's, he's a relic of an, uh, you know, yeah, he's this, clearly stuck in the past. This yeah. movie like is, is supposed to be set in, I think 2008 when it fucking comes oh, out, it, you know, it was absolutely contemporary. So like, you know, yeah, this, yeah. this guy is fucking old and crusty and he yeah. wants his, you know, he wants to his listen to his old days, bands yeah. and he wants to have his hair, you know, long, just like fucking Axel, uh, you know, Rose, yeah. Rose and shit. And I, I think he's mimicking, uh, Hulk Hogan. Oh, he is. Yeah, he too. definitely is like yeah, ripping yeah. off Hulk Hogan. Um, yeah. God damn. It's like, funny. He has a better hairline than Hulk Hogan though. Still. This is true. Yeah, this is true. By the way, uh, how old do you think Mickey Ork was in this film? He was in his fifties. Any more, you know, narrower than that or, uh, he was 54, 56. Very, Fuck. Oh, I'm very so good. good. Yeah. Uh, how about Marissa Tomei? Okay. So hold on. I, I have to get this out here. Yeah. I, I, I cannot believe that we went from 2008, a bunch of dudes saying, oh, you're old. We don't want a lap dance from you to like 2000. What was it? 20, 20, 17, 2018. We got the new Spider-Man movie and she, uh, she was Aunt May and everybody's like, I mean, oh man, all three of them. Let yeah. me get that uh, Aunt May. Usi, you know, uh, blows my fucking mind. Uh, I think that she's, she's probably 42. Damn on the money. Will. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. Oh man, I'm so money. fucking good. Yeah, I had to, I had to look at both of their ages during the film. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because I was really curious how old Mickey Work was. Obviously, he has yeah, he's had hard a- life. So let's say those are uh, city miles on that. 56, yeah, that's baby. true. Uh, whereas, like Sting, who I invoked earlier, I I think he's currently 64 and he's wrestling. That's nuts. Uh, yeah. that is fucking nuts. I've seen the picture of him and like, he's obviously gained some weight and shit, but he still looks pretty fucking good. Like he's a big well, dude. The fact that he wears face paint helps a lot oh, that's with true. that. That's but like, true. he does look good, but, um, he shouldn't be doing that at 60. No, that's like my he dad. doesn't need to be jumping off a ladder. My da- that's my, what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. Doesn't need to be jumping off a ladder and no, shit. I, I like, agree. Buddy. Like it was fine when he would go out there and he would, uh, he was like Darby Allen's like mentor. Mm-hmm. So he would just like stand behind the ring with like a baseball bat in case anybody wanted to get out of the line. Yeah. That was fine. Yeah. But then but he started like wrestling it, and you're yeah. like, buddy, no, please just put the trench coat and get the baseball bat and like just stand in the back. You're, you're threatening, you know, know. Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're a scary presence as it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I, I don't know. There's just so much about this film that I like, but at the same vein of things, cause I know that Aaron, Aronofsky is, uh, is a fucking ham fisted hackerino. I almost feel like every time I'm like getting in trance with this film again, I think to myself, Aaron, Aaron is like, or Darren, excuse me, not Aaron. Darren is like jerking off behind the camera. He knows that he's being very clever. 
he's like so clever like once again yeah. let's 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 go back to the the first deli scene come the fuck on like it's such a good scene but also come on well like we get the parallels at the end you know when he he's getting on the top rope and everybody's uh uh you know chanting ram jam yeah they're saying it so fast it's almost like they're cheering randy which yeah. is you know his name like uh, like the, all of this all of there, there's like so many different like things that you can see aronofsky's gooey little fucking hands are are in that i just uh, like as a as a person who watches his movies now like i I can't fucking help but think that he's just like really being masturbatory on his 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 symbolism because i know he loves it a mother has poisoned my mind for his movies well i know exactly what you mean yeah you felt it too didn't you yes yeah but that i am perhaps poisoned by future knowledge is the thing because I know of his later works. Oh, sure. Yeah. And But also, like, I felt this way seeing Requiem for a Dream, which he made much earlier. But I was kind of shocked when I looked up the critical, you know, response to this film. Yeah. And seeing a nearly universal praise. It was, what was that, 98? You, right? Yeah, it's a 98. You, you looked that up before That's, you watched the movie? After. Oh, okay. I was shocked that n- there wasn't, like, a major dissenting voice being like, it's a little hackneyed. Because even the one pull quote I ha- had where someone said um, it runs on admittedly pretty traditional lines was like some, one of the more like uh, what I thought honest and critical things to say about the film. Yeah. Cause I was like, yeah, this movie just feels like a typical sad sap, you know, Oscar Beatty, uh, you know, sad movie. Sure. And they, the fact that it is paired with Mickey work, like is a genius choice it's all it's too yes. on the nose in, in a way but it's like, also too on the nose you, yes <laughs> you look at it you look at it a certain way and it's too on the nose i get it dude yeah. i i fucking get it that's why like i guess i have such a weird relationship with this movie because <laughs> i remember seeing it and being in love with it i remember showing it to Haley like a couple years later yeah. and you know once again loving it and then mother came out mother came out and i realized aronofsky is he's so ham-fisted he he can't like the whole movie was about the fucking bible you know and and he would just he wouldn't like take the camera away from it or do anything like with artistic license he just was like this is the fucking bible you know and and we're just gonna do symbolism out the fucking ass you you know like halfway through you were like i get it no 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 no. within the first five minutes i got it oh yeah yeah it was just like and granted i actually enjoyed mother in in a way like i knew that that movie was not uh, it didn't have anything good to say, but like, man, watching watching the crazy shit on the the camera, like happening on camera, was was wild. Like, I guess I I loved it for the spe- spectacle, but not for the substance because there was no substance. Um, and it's just like I can't look at Aronofsky films the same way after that movie, you know? Yeah. Like, I liked the whale, I I did, but you know, the ending the ending was like a little too surreal for me. This is the only film besides requiem for a dream where it feels rooted in reality and i feel like that's because of the performances that were given i think that mickey rourke's like this being his life essentially sold it to me sold it to me so fucking hard you mm-hmm. know it, it 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 helps me hand wave away all of the really like just gratuitous symbolism that aronofsky cannot yeah. fucking help himself put in you know it probably helps that this is one of the few films that he didn't write i think that yeah yeah bring it back to that i think you're you're probably right right did he write mother did he write mother Mm -hmm. well actually no he didn't write mother he's got jesus wrote mother or whatever (laughs) god 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 wrote wrote mother Mother. yeah uh he is the sole credit writer on that film uh yeah i think obviously he uh you know he's not credited as a screenwriter or the writer on the wrestler but i think that he may have had artistic license and, sure you know like there were some improv scenes you know that yeah. he was like hey let's just do this you know on on dave's shoot or something yeah um so he was able to put his own spin on it and that's why the director is and to get into film uh 101 you know that's why the director is often considered the biggest auteur to have the most you know artistic license yeah on a on a film yeah because at the end of the day they're the ones dictating what what you're seeing most you know for the most part yeah that that changes and has different percentages for every for every film for every director for every writer what have you mm-hmm. 
Um, but sometimes you can just fucking tell. And you can definitely tell with Darren. Yeah, you can. Uh, he can't fucking help himself. Like I said, yeah. you know, it's it's like a fucking Tarantino and his long ass, uh, uh, you oh, know, yeah? uh, conversations. Shut up. Or Wes Anderson and his fucking color palettes. Like it, it's. Oh, low blow. Come on. Oh, That's you, you don't like that one? You don't, you don't like that one, I'm buddy? Sorry, you How don't about like his fucking color. tweed shit, bitch? <laughs> Fuck you. Anyways. Define tweed. Tweed. Uh, define tweed. Oh, tweed. Like literal yeah. like tweed blazers. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I was going at. Um, no, be. No, yeah, I know. The, the I Quentin know. Tarantino dialogue thing. Yeah, I know. Uh, have you seen uh, the Denzel Washington Gene Hackman submarine movie? No, Crimson but I, Tide. I kind of want to now. Uh, check it out. It's a great movie. It's got Denzel Washington, and of course, it's a great movie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I haven't even Denzel seen Washington it. and Gene, Gene Hackman like kind of face off. Yeah, as a just intellectual. You know, you know equals or some shit. Sort of. Sure. Uh, Gene Hackman is like you know the head of the submarine, and yeah. uh, they get an order. Uh, to launch a nuke but then it gets like interrupted and then they get a second message message that they don't get in full and gene wants to launch the nuke uh-huh and Denzel washington's like we cannot start a world war like let's On figure out what the rest of that message was yeah and they like it's a battle of wits between them and all this stuff for the rest of the movie and um Quentin Tarantino was brought on. He was like super hot right off of uh, Reservoir Dogs and I think Pulp Fiction at the time. Okay. And he was brought in to like punch up the script a little bit. And there is a scene in the beginning of the film where they're just like riffing on like Star Trek and like dropping like, you know, pop culture references yeah. and like talking really fast. And it's clear as day that like when you find out that Quentin Tarantino like wrote a little bit yeah. on it you're like oh, oh that was is clearly right written quentin right there yeah, <laughs> like then you. the rest of the film has nothing to do with that L- like i understand that there's like auteur the uh, mm-hmm. shit you know everybody has their style and whatnot mm-hmm. i just think that aronofsky's is <sighs> a little hokey that's hokey dude. that's how i feel too okay that's exactly how i feel i and that's not to say he's not a great filmmaker no because it's he, just not I mean, for me yeah i get you no but i, I did I, like I, this I, film this is maybe my favorite film of his that i've seen gotcha because I've greatly disliked the other ones I've seen. Yeah, like <laughs> so it's a low bar. Is still. is it is it just the same for you? Where it's it, you don't like his, like he steeps everything in symbolism, or like is that it? Or is it there more to it than just that? Like it it is that, and it's I don't know. I guess I just don't really find his films enjoyable. Because like even I remember seeing Black Swan and thinking wow that was a really good film and then the further away i got from it and it was getting all these awards i was like i don't think it deserved that oh it's like <laughs> i was prometheus. like i liked a lot of other films this year than that <laughs> it's like prometheus for me and it's i never want to revisit his films because they don't feel good <laughs> like i said man i've watched this one like five times and it's not even that i can't you know rewatch a movie that is like a downer you know like, yeah i like depressing movies but uh I really like depressing movies. <laughs> you and Jason both, yeah. I know. Oh, dude, we both like like love the pianist. Oh, that movie's so good. The uh, uh, what's the guy from Predators? Adrian Brody movie. Yeah. yeah. Fucking love. Why Adrian is that my pull? He's a Wes Anderson guy too. <laughs> no, shut the fuck up. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. Um, obviously, I love this uh, movie. Please go watch it uh, or not. I don't fucking care. You know what you should watch? You should watch Heels. Just watch Heels. And there's only two seasons, right? There's only two seasons, so unfortunately, because it was fucking canceled. I mean, you yeah. know, everybody knows. Everybody who listens to the show knows that it was fucking canceled because yeah. Jared told me while we were recording and left it in. It made me... So- <laughs> oh, it was... I had to leave that. Yeah, I know, because yeah. I was fucking... Like, it, it, you you killed me. It's rare that something exciting like that happens, like, on air. That's yeah. true. That's true. What, what streaming service is Heels on? I meant it's to on ask Stars. You stars yes yeah, on stars okay yeah you so go and get someone stars login exactly you don't, don't pay for it <laughs> or no no well if or you're getting the trial no, 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 i'm no, no, sure no. there's if, a free if, trial if yellow jackets season three comes out go watch heels while you're watching yellow jackets not... yellow jackets is, on oh, showtime. is it showtime i'm so sorry showtime yeah it's on the same streaming service as yellow jackets that's how i yeah. end up watching heels you know what's on stars that everyone loves what's that outlander that is correct that, like scottish like romance thing oh actually you know what maybe that's it is on stars because yeah. when a new season of that drops that's when you Haley, Haley signs re- up for it. yeah every subs for it and of then course. i'm like well i got heels baby yeah and we me and Haley binge watched all of season two of heels mm-hmm. before she even decided to start on on oh, outlander. outlander yeah that's how you know that movie that show is fucking good yeah that show is so good i cannot believe they canceled it i cannot believe it dude yeah somebody else needs to pick that shit up because it is so fucking good 
Well, hey, I'll take this opportunity. I should have done it in our Iron Claw episode as well because uh, Jeremy uh, Allen White is in that one too. Oh, that's right, yeah. Uh, but check out The Bear. Oh, that's right, yeah. Uh, it swept the Emmys the other night. Uh, mm-hmm. This was like a couple of weeks ago now, I think. But um, yeah, The Bear is great. It is not a time commitment either because those episodes are 30 minutes apiece and there's only two seasons. Except for that one hour long episode. There's one hour long episode, but oh my God, does it earn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i still like i know you're like i'm not gonna watch it you're gonna watch it i I'm know you are watch it. and you're gonna, gonna be like jared it. this episode i Haley wants to watch it and if uh if yeah. i walk by and it catches my interest i'll sit down and watch it but i'm not gonna fucking watch it baby can i tell you something that i think might pique your interest no damn you <laughs> <laughs> go and tell me <laughs> so the show opens uh the premise is that uh our main character Carmi the bear has uh, yeah the bear has inherited his brother's restaurant uh because his brother has just committed suicide um and we see him in flashbacks occasionally in the mm-hmm. show mm-hmm. and his brother is played by John Bernthal John Br- oh yeah the okay Punisher yeah the and, Punisher. Uh, Shane from the yeah. Walking Dead yeah, 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 yeah. um I know him as a uh, Kunas from uh from Fury oh he's the loader <laughs> yeah that movie has a stacked cast. That movie is fucking great. Hey, speaking of David Ayer, yeah, the do you want to do the beekeeper? Apparently, is doing well. <laughs> oh, is it not? No. Do you know about the movie? Yeah, it sounds like a QAnon ass movie. Oh <gasps> no! Yeah, it sounds oh, no. insane. Is David, I have seen people arguing about is David Ayer pills, bro. Oh, I don't know because no. I have seen people arguing about whether it's about Biden or Trump. Because it could be interpreted in both ways. That like, is he trying to say that like the Biden family is corrupt, or is he trying to say the Trumps are corrupt, or is it both? D- download. Is it, it like a uh, you know? Download it. It's both sides. <laughs> it's uh, radical centrism. <laughs> yeah, let's fucking do it, baby. Because I think I, I saw a, a big tweet making the rounds that like, yeah. yeah, the whole movie is about like a guy hunting down like Hunter Biden's laptop and like getting <gasps> revenge or something. It, but oh, then someone was like, no, it's Hunt- clearly about the Trumps. And it's like, do I- we get to see Hunter Biden's fat hog? <laughs> I don't have to watch a fucking a hearing where uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene brings it out. I can just watch this movie instead. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Let's go. The The movie sounds insane, though. Yeah. It, because it's about like a secret society of beekeepers, beekeepers that, that like, yeah, are like but special then, hitmen and shit. So apparently you meet the rest of the beekeepers. And Jason Statham's character is the only one that's like really weird and has all these sayings. The rest of them are pretty normal. <laughs> Tight, dude. That this movie sounds nuts. They couldn't they couldn't get um uh Jim Caviezel to be the beekeeper. Oh they had God. to get Statham instead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I want to watch this now. I like I like I was so nervous you were gonna say I want to do Sound of Fury. <laughs> or oh, is that it? No, it's the the Sound of Freedom. Sound of Freedom. It's Ugh. it is free to watch on Amazon Prime. I, gross. I don't yeah we're don't. not endorsing this movie listeners no 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 no, not at all but I want to watch Beekeeper I'll watch it Beekeeper I kind of want to see with morbid curiosity and because I love like a bad action movie especially if Jason Statham's in it I have watched so many bad Jason Statham movies and it was like there's a lot of them my it's first, like it my, was it could have been a three out of ten but because Jason was in it it's a six out of ten bro my uh my first date was uh with Haley was a uh, crank have I never told you that is are you saying that's a bad movie whoa well i mean like yeah it is we're about to throw down live on air <laughs> all right guys <laughs> <laughs> uh, jared is getting out of his seat right now he's coming at me with intent he is rolling his sleeves up yo he's got the he's iron pointing claw. a gun Fuck jared put the gun down <laughs> <laughs> oh god he hit me <laughs> oh god that's jared's music <laughs> here comes oh. courtney with a fucking steel chair <laughs> courtney legitimately loves crank one as well i love crank two the most it's but fine we both love the those movies it's um, fine I, I would have rather have seen snakes on a plane although now uh, that i say that they both like are not great but anyways what, no. what's up okay serious question yeah because we're doing the wrestler mm-hmm, yeah if you were a wrestler what would your entrance music be oh um so i don't actually know if they're allowed to like play like really heavy metal but i yes. do oh, oh, hold on, hold on. buddy it's wrestling once they play metal <laughs> one, one, one second one second one second one second i gotta i gotta pull up spotify real quick because uh, uh, what a oh you sweet summer child kind of sentence it's not it's not this song one second one second one second it's deliverance i believe burn it down 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 
Yeah, it's okay. I'll drop it. I'll drop it in the episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. The song would be uh, Deliverance by The Air I Breathe. Okay. Um, I'll drop a uh, listener. You're going to hear it right now. It's so fucking good. The 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 way that it ends is if the good die young, then I will live forever. I swear my soul to end this. It's so fucking good. I love this fucking song so much. It's a it's by a band who like <laughs> made one album in 2005 and then have done nothing but singles over the like course of their fucking uh thing and nothing nothing you know okay here here you go you know how you hit a home run uh with martyrs for me yes and i've never been able to recover that is this band the air i breathe is literally like the band the band that hits all of the things that i love wow and has never done anything since yeah and it's fucking sucks damn yeah well i have two okay depending on who my character would be or maybe what if i was a heel or a face sure so if I was a heel or I was a more of like like a goth or like just a dark character, yeah, my song would be Dracula by Rob Zombie. <laughs> okay, that's great. I fucking love that song. <laughs> okay. Uh, and if I was like a face maybe or just like not like a dark, you know, goth affiliated kind of character, yeah. uh, it would be Going Down by Freddie King. Um, I don't know that song. It is the theme song to Eastbound and Down. Oh, okay. Um, it, it's just, it's a great like, fast paced like southern blues kind of song gotcha and let's say like maybe my character would be like what's his name jared? a little southern and trashy what's his name jared southern and trashy i don't have a name i don't have would a name it be, picked out. would it be rachel tension <laughs> Do you know what that's a reference to? Oh no, I just that's I got a, the play on words. And yeah, that's it's a it's a reference to Tu Wong Fu. Oh, I've not seen that. It's good. Should we cover that? Yeah, for Pride Month. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a really good movie. Has it aged well? That's that's what I worry because like it wasn't actually made by you know LGBTQ uh, people, right? You know it what? Was made let me by straight people. Hey, let me rewatch it and I'll get back to you. Yeah, on that. that's the thing. I, that's what I worry about. Yeah. So the Queen of the Desert's really good too. I've seen that either. Yeah. Hmm. Come on, man. You gotta have a name. A uh, mine would be the Condemned. Condemned. <laughs> I stole that one from Heels too. There's a character named oh. the Condemned. Oh, it's so on, no. fucking good. I I'm not original. I'm not good. I'm not. I'm not Aronofsky. You know. I guess it would be Anxious Bear. <gasps> there you go, dude. Like the, the Anxious the, Bear. The Anxious Bear. The Anxious Bear. Because they're you have like, to like really take some fucking hair th- hair growth uh, hormones though to like really make yourself super hairy. It wouldn't be a stretch. It wouldn't be yeah. a stretch. I wouldn't know. I haven't seen oh, you put a yeah. shirt on yet. <laughs> um, and that like I've had that name for a long time. Like, yeah, I just organically came up with that. Yeah, but like and also like my mom nicknamed me like. Uh, black bear yeah black bear when i was a kid yeah um and i'm just naturally anxious all the time of course uh <laughs> but there is a wrestler in aew that like his nick his name is adam page but he's nicknamed the anxious cowboy oh, okay uh, which i always like really appreciate about him like, yeah. he's very open about like his Having anxiety, anxiety that's stuff. cool that's yeah, very good yeah. i think so on. i would be like kind of a co-adopting that you know <laughs> i would go by will switch and gauge that's pretty good thank you thank you nathan for that one you might want to um clear that with them first though i'll call them up and maybe i'll call my Time boys Warner music or whoever the like, hey guys, label is <laughs> look it's great it's clever you know there's a engage the will switch and then i'll like i turn my hand into a buzzsaw and i start like sawing people it's the iron buzzsaw <laughs> there's a wrestler um that comes out to the uh what's their their big hit that's like call me oh i don't know dude that's the kill switch song that's like there's a one whole song bunch of them there's a whole bunch of them. Oh, come on, that was like their biggest song in like 2005. Oh, okay. I what album was that? Anyways, keep keep. I going. might drop it. Here. Yeah, here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but anyway, there's a wrestler that came out to the on the AEW the day, and I turned to Courtney and I was like, I fucking hate that song. That song was so big, and I never got into Will, the Kill Switch Engage. Oh, for real? Will Switch Engage. Shoot, yeah, there you go, dude. I love Kill, Kill Switch Engage. They could never get into them. I saw them in concert at a uh, Warp Tour. Yeah, uh, the last year that I went. God, you were a cool guy that went to Warp Tour, dude. I, oh man, the pit. The pit was fucking great. Oh, it's so good. So good. God, I can't do that shit now anymore. Like, I can't do that a lot. Yeah. Because I will fucking, I'll look like Mickey Rourke at the end of uh, (laughs) this movie. (laughs) 
Well, folks, thank you for listening to Debaser. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to us on your podcast app and follow us on social media by searching for at DebaserPod, especially on Instagram. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to. We are looking to hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, so please check us out there. And hopefully, by the time you're hearing this, I have updated it because I'm a little behind. Uh, I've been Jared Rusk, and my lovely co-host has been Will Taylor. Will, where can people find you, and what would you like to plug? You can find me on Instagram at pocket underscore infinity. And I would like to plug the air that I, the air I breathe, the fucking band that doesn't make any music anymore. Go listen to them. They're fucking awesome. If you like uh, any kind of like metalcore shit, that band's for you, baby. Good endorsement. Hopefully uh, they've done nothing problematic. <laughs> I don't think they have. Okay. You want me to clear them before I air yeah, this? Yeah, go ahead and do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a little uh, skip trace on them just uh, to make sure. <laughs> well, that's a wrap, folks. Good night. Debaser is hosted and produced by Will Taylor and Jared Rusk. Want to email the show? Send it to podcast at debaserpod.com. Want to help us out? Please leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice, especially Apple Podcasts. If you write a five-star review of Debaser on Apple Podcasts, I may read your review in a future episode. Thank you for listening, and take care out there.